Hello, Jean. Hi. <laughs> Who are you? I'm Bert. Yay! Yeah. Um, we're doing a book haul this morning. This is Shani Reed. Yay! Yeah. Yes! So we're going to do a book haul. We've got quite a few books. Yes, we have. We've got loads of books. Yeah. So we need to just get straight, get straight to it. To power through. Yeah! So, should we go for it? Go first. Okay. So this one is one that, you know, everyone's reading. It's the buzzy book at the moment. <laughs> All over my book yeah. too. <laughs> and that's the erotic cloth. Mm -hmm. I was joking. Um, and this is a collection of ex essays um, edited by Leslie Miller and Alice Kettle. Seduction and fetishism, fetishism <laughs> in textile. So it's got lots of illustrations as well. So lots, it's kind of quite glossy and, and beautiful. It's quite classy, isn't it? Yeah. So um, it's kind of quite new. And the reason that that's... I really like this one. This is a, a suet picture after... Suicide with shotgun. So there's like blood oh, on the see, bed, yeah. but it's kind of really beautiful as well, mm -hmm. isn't it? But I bought this one for um, specifically for this essay, Folds, Scissors and Cleavage. Can you say that bit? In Giovanni Battista Moroni's Il Tagliapani. And it's by Angela Maddock. And um, that's the picture there. So Angela Maddock kind of lives in... Uh, Wales and she's like a textile artist also does stuff around knitting and um, she's amazing <laughs> I'm a bit in love with her. Like her I'm pretty sure she's not watching but really hoping she isn't after yeah. I've said about how yeah. much I love her but uh, yeah so that's that one and then the other book I got which is kind of around um, sewing is this one which is just like this cute little craft book called Embroidered Garden Flowers Botanical Motifs for Needle and Thread by Kazuko Aoki and it's I like it. I'm not going to do these flowers. They're cute though. Right? <laughs> they are cute and yeah. there might be bits that I will use in them because it does have like little kind of like stitches as well but it's a really beautiful little book. Lovely. Yeah. What have... So some of yours you've read already haven't you? Do you want to talk about those? I have. Then? So we went book shopping prior to our holiday in Cornwall and I managed to read quite a few of the ones that we bought which is the plan and I'm glad it Did you happened. read all of those in Cornwall? I read four books in Cornwall. Yeah. Yeah, so I read all of these in okay. Cornwall. So <laughs> I read um, Beryl Bainbridge, Sweet William. Um, I really like Beryl Bainbridge. Um, I kind of, I get a real sense of her being quite a sort of spiky, difficult mm. woman. Um, but her books are kind of really funny, quite dark. Um, this one's about a relationship that seems pretty doomed from the start. Um, 1975, that one was. Uh, I gave it four stars. If, if you want to know. Um, I also read and really enjoyed The Holiday Friend by Pamela Hansford Johnson, who had a relationship with Dylan Thomas, we have recently found out. That's what Charlotte told us, yeah. our, our Dylan Thomas expert. Yes, Yeah. yes, we've been informed. She says, her, this, is it her voice she hears in the gallery? Because there's an interview with oh, her, okay. I guess. Yeah, yeah. I, I have read one previously by her called The Unspeakable Skipton, which I didn't enjoy hugely it was okay but this one was really good kind of like a sort of domestic thriller stalkery kind of story mm. um it was pretty intense and like by the end i was like <gasps> so <laughs> um i also look at this beautiful jacket it's so nice and that font in the back is just I know, dream it's just time like, it's such a nice design yeah pinks it's, and it's got french flaps as well doesn't yeah it, it does oh. have french flaps so this is a <laughs> reissue of a 1978 Robert Woutzer Prize winner. Um, it's uh, The Weight of Things by Marion Fritz. Um, I didn't enjoy it, unfortunately. Um, it wasn't for me. It, I don't know. I don't know if it's um, lost in translation or yeah. it just didn't work for me. Um, okay. Which I was very sad about. Yeah, it looks so good. Yeah, but um, having said that, I, it was part of the Reading Women in Translation, yeah. um, which I've tried to do a bit this month. So the next book was also part of that, which is Erin Nemirovsky's Fire in the Blood. I did enjoy this one a bit more. Um, I have read pre other Irene Nemirovsky's, which I've enjoyed more than this one. But this was good. I'm glad I read it. It was quite slight, really quick, easy read um, about buried past sort of secrets and uh, love and how um, you have fire in your blood when you're young 
or like passion and then how like that's tempered through age but actually it can be rekindled mm. um that's good okay and then um i bought this which you found for me in a bookshop which is where the dead pause and the japanese say goodbye by marie mitsuki mocket and it's um a memoir i think it's a bit sort of memoir travel um and also kind of about going to a buddhist temple as well in, J in japan um yeah, Lovely, grief. It? it sounds really good. Like, it does look mm. good. Yeah. And we've not heard of that one at all. No, she's. It says she's written a novel called Picking Bones from Ash. So, mm. so there we go. That's that one. Um, I've also got um this one by Michael Stone. So Michael Stone died in two thousand and seventeen, um, and this is called The World Comes to You: Notes on Practice, Love, and Social Action, and um he's an amazing uh writer about sort of yoga. Um, Buddhism and he's also a psychotherapist or he was a psychotherapist so this I think is like kind of collected from little bits that were kind of left so they're mm. more just like short little um, very short essays or snippets yeah. but That'd be nice though I think yeah I, mean, I think he's yeah, yeah. he was great fan. I love Michael yeah. Stone tell them about Should I do this one? this one so also I've got Girl by Girl How I Became JT Leroy. Leroy. We thought it was Leroy, but yeah, it's Leroy. Only for about 10 years. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and this is by Savannah Knoop. So we went to see the movie, which has got Kristen Stewart and Laura Dern, and Kristen Stewart is the Savannah Knoop yes. character or the J who's pretending to be JT Leroy. Yeah. Um, and did you like the film, Bert? The film was so good. Have you seen it? <laughs> it's so good. Um, I really enjoyed the yeah, film. Yeah, yeah. I'm a huge Kristen I mean, you can't Stewart go wrong fan. with Kristen Stewart or no. Laura Dern. No. But this was particularly good. Yeah, and it had Mick Jagger's son in briefly. Yeah. <laughs> you blink and you miss him. Um, but I was interested in that yeah. bit. Yeah. But um, yeah, so the, uh, has anyone read any JT Leroy? Because I, re I read one back in the day. Yeah. They were huge at the time. There was like a big buzz anyway. Yeah. And um, yeah, I really, I really enjoyed it. So it was really good. So actually, I learned so much from watching mm. this film that I didn't know kind of the, the details yeah. of at the time. And Savannah... Uh, um, Savannah Cooper is so fascinating. Yes. And it it sort of felt like that Savannah kind of got a little bit caught up. Like it almost felt like it just went got away with got away from them. Yeah. Didn't it? It Whether didn't or not seem... that's just um, the perspective yeah. that they are bringing to the film because the film is based on the book. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it does seem like, like it, made... it kind of snowballed. Yeah, and yeah. it made sense to me. And it also, there's a great interview with Savannah which I'll link, and they were talking about how, or the interviewer asked about how. That there's chinks in the story and um like why didn't anyone know and mm. Savannah's kind of saying well that that um she thought that they thought that Laura Dern the Laura Dern character or the JT Leroy I can't remember her name um the person that wrote the JT Leroy she, she that she sort of played with those chinks so she yeah. would um have a conversation like she'd pretend she'd pretend to be a British woman wasn't it yeah. called Speedy yeah but then sometimes in mid-conversation she'd drop the accent and see yeah. if anyone noticed so there's kind of these real interested levels of kind of performance. Like testing the boundaries of what yeah. people are willing to believe. Yeah, well. and also kind of all these celebrities believed in it as well. Yeah. And so how it, it was almost like the celebrities were kind of taking advantage of the story yeah. as well. And also, that... Yeah, they were. And also like just uh, increasing the myth of the whole yeah. thing. Yeah, like... yeah. So, but anyway. It is fascinating. It's really interesting. Yeah. I'm really interested to read it. What have you got? Um, okay, so other books that I bought pre-holiday, which I haven't got to yet, but I need to get to this one while it's still summer, <laughs> is uh, summer. It's just by, this weekend, so this ending weekend, on Monday. Uh, by Edith Wharton. Um, yeah, Ethan Frome is one of my all-time favourite books. Um, so I've always wanted to try more Edith Wharton. This is a story of forbidden sexual passion and thwarted dreams set against the backdrop of a lush summer in rural New England. What sounds better than that? Mm. And what a beautiful um, Penguin Classic edition oh. as well. Um, I've also got this Margaret Drabble, The Seven Sisters. Um, to read. This is a 2002 Margaret Drabble. Um, I have read Jerusalem the Golden previously, which I, I did enjoy. Um, I've been wanting to try more Margaret Drabble for a while. I know the Millstone was kind of a big deal in the 60s. Um, this one's about a uh, woman called Candida Wilton, who um, it says has been ignored by her husband and children for years before being displaced by a younger woman. And she moves to London and uh, finds this kind of circle of sisters, of female friends. I like the sound of it. Uh, yeah, it sounds really good. So sounds looking good. forward to that one. Um, I've got Ida Howe by Emily Ruskovich. Um, 
we were in a bookshop and I couldn't find books I wanted to read and obviously you can't it's leave. a struggle sometimes yeah and I couldn't leave without one no so I bought this um which I know which since buying and I put on Instagram and then lots of people commented about how much they liked it so yeah. I'm hoping it is going to be a good one yeah I think it will yeah it's got a lovely jacket yeah should I do the next yeah. one yeah I've also got Ask the Passengers by A.S. King, which is a young adult novel. Um, Ariel Bissett um, talks about her as being one of her favourite writers. And I've never read any because I don't. they don't really seem to be around in the UK much. And they're not. Yeah. Like I wanted to read this one and this wasn't available in the library. So I've ordered this. So I'm hoping it's going to be good because I've been reading a bit more young adult is recently. It what, is it like a kind of roady road novel? Um, I don't think so. No. Don't know. Just no. like a kind of contemporary sort of yeah Catholic. not fantasy no <laughs> yeah. i don't think it's really knowledge it's more, yeah. clear of fantasy for i've a been struck i so yesterday i gave up on um six of crows <laughs> like i read a good chunk of it i tried it twice yeah and... you want to be the person that reads six of yeah crows. but i'm not you know so. good to learn yeah you go next oh yeah well speaking of oh. young adult my excellent friend b recently lent me four uh, books by E. Lockhart, because I expressed an interest in reading some E. Lockhart. She's a big fan. Um, I remember We Were Liars. This is just kind of an arc. Um, but I remember We Were Liars being a big deal at the time, and I want, wanted to read it then. They all look really good, actually. And um, since I don't read a huge amount of young adult, like maybe two or three a year, I kind of would really like to try one of mm. these. So I really like the sound of this one. I the, had a look at that yeah, one as well. The Disreputable History of Frankie Landau Banks. Has anyone read any E. Lockhart? Let me know. Um, we've got Drama Rama here and How to Be Bad. Where Where should I start? Frankie Landau Banks? So is this one, that has one? that one got a few authors then? Because it's Looks got like Lockhart it, Miracle. Yeah. Uh, Lauren Miracle I've read. She's in that book of oh, um, yeah. the is snow. Is it maybe wood. a collection of yeah. shorts? Funny, sassy female characters and a road trip. Yeah, that sounds good. <laughs> uh, um... Over Reading Rush, I read like a, a non-fiction book about women and religion, which I can't remember what it's called now. And about your daughter's... And your daughter's your prophecy. Your prophecy. Yeah. And I was asking for recommendations after that. Mm -hmm. And Curious Mmm <laughs> recommended, <Good name. laughs> recommended some books. Um, one of them um, I've ordered and hasn't arrived yet, which is yes. the Terry Tempest Williams, I think that's what she called, which looks really good. Yeah. But then um, she also recommended Anne Lamott, who I'm who I've been aware of, but yeah. have never picked anything up. And this is Stitches, A Handbook of Meaning, Hope and Repair, which is just a little book, but looks really Lovely. good. And then she also recommended Living with a Wild God, which um, they had at the library. And this is A Non-Believer's Search for the Truth About Everything by Barbara Ehrenreich. And that looks good. That's I think really that's, good. Yeah. And then one that I bought that I'd kind of um, had in my wish list for a little while is Pure by Linda K. Klein. And it's inside the evangelical movement that changed a generation of young women and how I broke free. So it's kind of like the purity movement, um, which is kind of... Sounds good. It's going to be fascinating. Yeah, it sounds it? really yeah. interesting, especially someone that's kind of right in it as well. Yeah. Um, and you're yeah. quite pure, aren't you? Yeah. yeah. Purity rings, purity pledges and purest purity balls. It sounds awful, doesn't it? But yeah, the whole idea of purity is just, yeah. in that sense, is yeah. horrible, right, isn't it? Yeah. So that's that one. Gloria Steinem says it's good. Yay. Do you want to go? Shall I? Yeah. Um, I've got more fiction. It's all fiction, isn't it, with me? No, you've is got all... a non-fiction, a couple of non-fiction. Oh, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. <laughs> um, I've got this recently reissued Joyce Carol Oates novel called The Triumph of the Spider Monkey. This is the uh, first time in print for 40 years. So that one's out, like 1970-ish. And it's one of her novels that's based, I think, on a true event. Or, um, it, I think it's like a serial killer case that um, she writes about. I'm not sure like what kind of vibe I'm getting from this mm. one, but um, it's on the hard case crime. They're always really good. Yeah, I love like um, a bit of JCO. Yeah, can't I go used wrong. to read, read loads. I haven't read any in a few years, yeah. but she seems to be writing loads of short story collections. Yeah, at the moment, literally like one every week. Well, she writes like about yeah. five books a year, doesn't she? Yeah, at least. So. <laughs> yeah. Next one, next okay. One? Uh, it's another. It's a crime one. It's Margaret Miller, um, who they have started reissuing her books, and I'm really pleased about. Um, I read Beast in View by her like a few years ago and really enjoyed it. Um, and this is another sort of 1950s crime thriller um, called Vanish in an Instant. Virginia Barclay is a nice, well-brought-up girl. So what's she doing wandering through a snowstorm in the middle of the night, blind drunk and covered in someone else's blood? Oh, that sounds good. 
<laughs> um, I've got Surrender by Joanna Pocock, which is on the Fitz Crowd. It sounds so good. Yeah. Yeah. And then I put this one on Instagram and someone told me it was great. Yeah. But I can't remember who it was. Um, but this is, it says it's blending memoir with reportage, criticism and nature writing. And it says it's a narrative non-fiction work on the changing landscape of the American West, inspired by a two-year stay in Montana. Hmm. And it's a, like personal crisis as well. You read it and then tell me. Yeah, if it's, it does look if really it's good. It's, I'm yeah. Building up my collection of Fitzgerald, I not reading any. Yeah, well done. Yeah. Good work. <laughs> and then um, the other, another non-fiction is this one, which is Yoga for um, Better Sleep by Mark Stevens. Um, Mark Stevens has written quite a few books on um, yoga, so I think he's kind of quite knowledgeable. Yes. Um, I teach a class called Yoga for Sleep, yeah, or yeah, something yeah. similar. So yeah. um, I'm interested in. Sleeping reading this one yeah. as well. Yeah. Yeah. So that's that. That sounds good. What you got? I have got a non fiction book actually. So it's um, Michael Chabon's Pops. I found this the other day in the bookshop and it just looks so cute. Um, it's such a great cover. Mm. Um, it's just um, uh, his reflections on fatherhood. So I think he's writing about his own father and what it's like being father. I'm really interested in reading about fatherhood. Um, Judd Apatow says it feels like a late night talk with a friend about how we love our kids and how hopeful we are that we're better dads than we fear. Mm. Sounds pretty good. Yeah. Um, I've also got a um, poetry uh, collection, Patrizia Cavalli, Italian poet. This is um, selected poems from 1974 to 2006 called My Poems Won't Change the World. Uh, it's tr translated as well, is it's, it? It's another translated yeah. one, so yeah. So I'm making an effort with the translated Women in Translation this week. I've done nothing uh, on that. <laughs> Although, having said that, I haven't read this yet. Yeah. Um, but it's um, poems of the self, the body, pasta, cats, the city, and always and above all love. So that just sounds like perfection it to me. It does sound great. Yeah. Should I carry on? <laughs> Go on. Have you got less? <laughs> carry on. I've got another Anita Bruckner to read. This is The Bay of Angels. I love Anita Bruckner. So kind of always very uh, essential to have an Anita Bruckner waiting on the shelf to pick up. Um, so I read my final one the other day um, called Altered States and that was really good and then I realised I didn't have any more I need to book to read so I needed to Let's get another one Shall I go next? Yeah. So you bought me these two yes. and this one is called Mother Winter and then it's got writing that means I can't understand can't read what her name no, is on the really cover so I'm going to have to it's Sophia Shalmiev and it, yeah so it's a memoir and I think it's like about her she was born in Russia yeah. and then moved to America um, yeah in the 80s, maybe. Yeah. Um, but it, yeah, it says it's a refugee coming of age tale, feminist manifesto, and a meditation on motherhood, displacement, gender politics, and art. <gasps> it looks amazing. Yeah. And all the people in the back. Yes, Ali it's Miles. all your people. That's why I yeah. picked it. Yeah, Ali Miles, Chris Christ, Michelle T, Lenny Zumas, Melissa Fairboss. Yeah, it's um, a shiny book. Yeah, yeah, it looks great. Yeah. And then the other one you got me was this one, which is Cannonball. It's a graphic novel. It says graphic this. novel, fiction, LGBTQ. And this one's by Kelsey Roten. And it says it's about a character called Caroline Bertram, who's an aspiring writer, queer art school graduate, near alcoholic, and self proclaimed tortured genius. And Yeah, I love the illustrations. It's they're really, really good, aren't yeah. they? It's just like a lovely book, actually, yeah. isn't it? This kind of nice hardback. Who is it? On and the civilized books, uncivilized so I don't books. know. No. So Nothing. that's all of the books. Very well You've done. You've still got one more. I've got one uh, more to haul. This is Alfred Hayes, um, The Girl on the Via Flaminia. I love Alfred Hayes. I've read In Love by him and Your Face for the World to See, and they're both perfect, perfect books. Um, they're kind of quite dark, quite almost like sort of Hollywood noir y. They're sort of in the, from the 50s. Um, this one is from 1949. Um, it, there's a, a nice sort of quote here. It says, um, Hayes has done for bruised men what Jean Rhys does for bruised women. Um, and so, yeah, highly recommend. Really looking forward to reading this particular one. What are you reading right now, Shani? Well, I yesterday, did I already say this? I, when I DNF'd, uh, uh, what was it? Six of Crows. Mm. So I'm... Not reading it, I need to read a start of fiction yeah. today, but I've got two non-fiction on the go. So I've got Pleasure Activism, which is collected and gathered by Adrian Marie Brown. Politics are of... feeling good. Oh, yeah. And um, I'm reading this one with um, Mercedes and Charlotte from Tired Mama's Tries to Read. Dream Team. Yeah, yeah. they're so great. Yeah. And we're having kind of interesting chats because there's um, lots of kind of interesting discussions in here. So there's like 
chapter about weed. Um, there's one like uh, liberating your fantasies. Mm. Um, pornography and accountability. Mm -hmm. um, there's something about. I'm not going to read some of those ones out. <laughs> there's something about. <laughs> there's something about nipples. Some adult content. <laughs> Very yeah. adult content, yeah. yeah, yeah. Nipples are magic. Yes, yes, they are. Yeah. <laughs> yes, they so are. we've been having some uh, good chats on that. Yes. Um, it's a really good buddy read book. I yeah, because you have started it previously and not. Yeah, it's really interesting. But I, it, yeah. it was one that you, you know, when you put something down and then you're not drawn to pick it back yes. up. So I've been reading that we've been reading like three little essays a day. I've kind of, I'm kind of lost about where we are. <laughs> so I feel like I'm vaguely in the area that yeah. they're in. Um. I think it's a really interesting book and Ava Marie Brown is really smart yeah. and um, bringing lots of diverse voices together mm -hmm. and I really appreciate that. Um, I'm feeling like it doesn't necessarily all come under pleasure activism particularly, but it's still yeah, it's kind interesting. Yeah, kind of term. To... Yeah, yeah. And then um, the other one I'm reading, which I've only just started and I'm reading with a, my friend Anna, is Braiding Sweetgrass by Robin Wall. Chimera? Chimera? I about that really want to read. Yeah. yeah. And it's Nature Essays and it says Indigenous Wisdom, Scientific Knowledge and the Teaching of Plants. Mm, Elizabeth Gilbert recommends it. Mm, and Jane Goodall. Yeah. So. Yeah, I love the sound of that one. And what are you reading? I am reading and loving The Bad Trip by James Riley. This is non-fiction, Dark Omens, New Worlds and the End of the Sixties. Um, so yeah, it's kind of focusing on um, the dark side of the end of that decade. Um, so it's touched on, you know, like uh, Charles Manson and Zodiac Killer mm. um, and art and uh, poetry and music. And this is really, really good. I'm, I really am enjoying this one. Okay, I read a lot of books. Read that one. Yeah, I've read a lot of books on the, the 60s and that era. And, and I found the more I read, it's kind of the more I become a little bit bored about reading the same things over mm. and over again. This really doesn't do that. It's really well written. It ties lots of interesting points together mm. from across the decade. Yeah, I'm thoroughly enjoying that one. But I feel that's what kind of, I don't know, it's what I want from nonfiction now. I don't necessarily yeah. want just someone telling me stuff. I want people to, yeah. um, you know, be investigating stuff and, yeah. and questioning yeah. things. Yeah, it just kind of shows that sort of um, personal insight. Yeah, I want, the, I want yeah. the author in the book yeah. as well. Now, not but... so much with this one. Uh, it's not really okay. like, but, um, but his connections are really unique. Yeah. I think. They're kind of quite yeah. interesting, yeah. like how he ties things together. So, yeah. That's everything. That is everything. A lot of books. It's a lot of books, isn't mm -hmm. it? Yeah. So let us know what we should read out of these, or if you've read any of them. Or what not to read. What not to read. Yeah. yeah. I'm sure you've all been uh, reading The Erotic Cloth. I have. <laughs> yeah. Have a lovely weekend. Thank you. Have a lovely long bank holiday weekend here in yeah, the UK. Yeah, yeah. Or summer for you. Or summer for you. <laughs> Crossing guard holidays. <laughs> you do.